Texas A&M has a recruit coming in that I don't think we're talking about enough. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefani. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to talk a little bit about an underrated player that is coming in Texas A&M as a freshman. We're going to break down Texas A&M baseball's win over Incarnate Word, and then we are going to talk about something that I really don't want to have to talk about, which is Texas a and basketball, but we're going to do it. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on YouTube, helps a ton, leave five stars on podcast platforms, all that really does help the show out, I really appreciate it. But let's get straight into this, breaking down this player, and it's Miles O'Neal, the quarterback. You know, there's a lot of players... Um, quarterback wise, it's easy to get, it's easy to get excited about a quarterback. Everybody knows that it's fun. It's it's fun to talk about quarterbacks and quarterback battle. And will this guy play? Are we going to get the, you know what I mean? Different things. Anything quarterback related is always a fun discussion to have, but miles O'Neal, you know, I really respect 24 seven sports and their rankings. As, as y'all know, I talk about this all the time. 24 seven sports is my go-to, but I think they got it wrong on miles O'Neal. They don't have him ranked where he should be. His composite ranking on 24-7 sports, which, once again, composite, compiles all of the ranking systems together. On three, Rivals, ESPN, compiles all those rankings and, you know, evens them out and all that. And in that, O'Neal is ranked um, 306th. But they have him ranked as, like, the 45th best quarterback, like – 24-7 24-7 sports does not think Miles O'Neal is going to be the guy at any point. And, you know, now, we need to lay this out. I'm not saying that Miles O'Neal is going to be the starting quarterback for Texas A&M this year or next year. But, you know, in the new world of college football, if you were willing to stick it out at a program, eventually you can you can at least be – the number two guy in, you know, like a fight for a starting quarterback role. Like you can be, well, you know, you at least get a shot to fight for the job in spring or, or you know, in in the fall or um, so basically, you know, Miles O'Neill is not going to be competing with Jalen Henderson and Connor Wigman and Marshall Reed for the starting job this year. I don't think, I mean, unless something absolutely absurdly crazy happens, which I don't think will happen, but and then next year, you know, let's say Connor Wigman has a great year and he goes pro after this year. It's very possible. If that happens and Marcel Reed break uh, is able to beat out Henderson, you know, the following year, um, I need to check on Henderson's eligibility. But let's say that were to happen or vice versa, you know, and, and one of them were to hit the portal, Miles O'Neill is is – up there in the depth chart. Now, I know that you're going to have a 20. I think Texas is going to get a really talented quarterback in the 2025 class, which we'll talk about. Um, our day with Brian Smith, our recruiting expert, we're going to do that on that show will come out Friday, and that'll be a weekly occurrence going forward. I'm going to record with Brian on Thursday afternoon. It'll come out Friday morning going forward. So, those of you that are big time into recruiting, we'll have a recruiting with episode with the best in the business every Friday. So, um, that's something to be excited about. But You know, what I'm saying is, Miles, if you watch him play the quarterback position, he has a absolute cannon, a hose. I mean, he can fling the football. He was ranked in, you know, whether it was on three, 24 seven sports, they did like a, they, they, the best position, you know, uh, quarterback for arm talent, the best uh, running back for speed, like, and they gave each player in the category, and he was the best quarterback when it came to arm strength. In, in the whole class. And it makes sense why, because he has a literal cannon. And if you watch the tape on him, 
he makes some good throws. Now, once again, I always add this caveat when I talk about tape is these are highlights. I would love to get down and watch Miles O'Neill play, you know, a game and see, okay, that's not a great throw. That's an incredible throw because his great throws are incredible throws. I mean, he's putting balls in the bucket from 60 yards. I mean, obviously that's a bit much, but from, you know, 45, 50 legitimately. And that's kind of my point is, he he has the arm talent to be an absolute monster. He's six foot five, 220 pounds. Um, he can move a little bit. He's not a running quarterback, but he can move to get himself out of trouble. Uh, just you know, I'm not, not a ton, but he can like he's not Henderson, Marcel Reed, Connor Wigman athletic, but he can move a little bit. Um, and I, I'm just telling you, just something about this kid when he when, when he committed. When he committed, I was like, I, I just, for some reason, I'm buying stock in Miles O'Neill. Some might say, ah, well, he's kind of just like, you know, a solid quarterback to throw in the class, and we'll have a better quarterback in the 2025 class, and then you'll have Reed and Wigman, and it'll go. then when they're done, it'll go to the 25 class quarterback. Maybe, you know, maybe that could happen, but I'm just telling you, I, there's something, I think this kid's underrated, and I, I just think at some point in his Texas A&M career, we all know how Texas A&M's history recently of quarterbacks getting hurt. I, I'm just telling you, at some point in his career, I think you're going to see Miles O'Neill quarterback Texas A&M, and I think he's going to do a really good job. And I, and I think, you know, I mean, I just think we aren't, and myself included, I don't think we're talking enough about this kid. I'm really been impressed with everything, you know, everything he's done. And listen, once again, he's the guy, the offer list, it doesn't stand, you know, jump off the chart at you. There's no Bama and Georgia and Tennessee and Texas and um, Oklahoma and USC. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a pretty, you know, Division One, but pretty just kind of you know normal looking offer list. Nothing crazy. But so this kid is definitely the definition of underrated. That's what he is. And I'm just telling you the arm talent he possesses now. Does he need to work on accuracy? Sure, a little bit. Does he maybe need to get a little bit more athletic? Sure. You know, there's things that come with being a, a Division One football player. You're going to get better at. You're going to get more athletic. You're going to get stronger. You're going to, um, you know, learn how to how to how to p- different things when it comes to just being in an SEC football program. So, you know, I think that he's going to if he's developed well, which I think you could see that happen. I think that Texas A&M is going to have a really good I just, I just think Coach Colin Klein is going to be incredible with quarterbacks. Um, so I think Coach Klein can can really work with this kid. I just think that this, I think that that Miles O'Neill is a player who who I mean, yes, underrated is the word I'm using, but I'm just saying I think he's someone that y'all list to Michael ah, Andrew. I don't see him getting on the field much ever at his Texas A&M career. It's kind of just you know because I always say how important it is to have a player at each position in every recruiting class. You always want to have, you need a quarterback in every recruiting class, even if it's, uh, even if maybe one year it's not your highlight quarterback. But I just think that this kid, even though he's not that, he's not a highlight quarterback. He's not a guy that um, is going to jump off the recruiting list, jump off the stat sheet at, or, uh, you know, that kind of stuff at you. But he is a solid player with a ton of upside. Upside is the key word. Upside, upside, upside. The arm talent he possesses, if he can work on the things that he struggles at, Miles O'Neill can be a really good quarterback in the SEC. I really do believe that. Um, now, you know, you, he, he's got to be willing to stick it out because it's not going to be for a few years. And in this day and age of college football, if, if folks don't get on that field early, they're heading on to their next spot, which is the reality of, of what college football is. So he's got to be willing to stick it out a little bit, you know. Um, what's his uh, Marshall Reed will be a sophomore next year. Connor Rigman's gonna be in his third year. So I mean, you're gonna have you know what if you, you never know what can happen. What if Connor Wigman balls out and he's a second round pick next year, and then Marcel Reed wins the job, um, in his his junior year, and he's incredible. And he, got, I mean, you never know; those two guys could go pro. And Miles O'Neill is, is the older guy in the room, and he has a shot at the job. I mean, it can happen. So I think he's underrated. I think he's got a ton of upside, a ton of arm strength, a ton of arm talent. If he just develops a little bit during his time at Texas a and I think you could see Miles O'Neill crack the lineup at some point. So 
It's just a feeling. Once again, I think he's underrated. I think he's got upside. It's just a feeling. Let me know y'all's thoughts on Miles Neal. Does he excite you? Could you see him sneaking into the lineup at some point during his Texas A&M career? Oh, I'm really curious to hear y'all's thoughts on this. I just kind of like was like, huh, we need to talk about Miles O'Neal. We haven't talked a ton about him. So let me know what y'all are thinking on that. We are going to break down the basketball, or excuse me, the baseball game, the win over Incarnate Word. We're going to do that coming up right here. Unlocked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is the place that I get every ticket to any event I need a ticket to, whether it's a baseball game, whether it's a football game, a basketball game, a hockey game, comedy, whether it's to a concert, wherever I'm going that involves a ticket, I'm getting it on Game Time. It is the best and easiest app to use when it comes to getting tickets. It also gives you the best prices, and that's what I love so much about Game Time, is they are in the business of saving people money. Going to these events are, are you know, they bring us joy. They're they're great. That they, you know things like this are what make us happy in life. And and when you have to pay prices through the roof for these events, it just takes the fun out of it. With Game Time, they are in the business of saving you money. I use it. I recommend it. Game time is the best place to go get your tickets. I promise you, you got to go check them out. And if you use code locked on at checkout, you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. That's code locked on for $20 off your first purchase when you download the game time app. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Texas A&M gets a big win over Incarnate Word, 9-3. Chris Cortez, woo, 5.2, 5 and two-thirds innings, uh, five hits, two runs, no earned, eight strikeouts. You'll take that all day long. He also, um, let me pull, I put the numbers away. I believe that he, he had hit by, he hit, hit a batter, but I don't think he walked anybody. Um, so let me pull up these numbers, but that's a great start for him. Uh, Chris Cortez is a guy, you know, uh, he could work his way into it. If somebody struggles in the weekend rotation, I wouldn't mind seeing Cortez take over. I just, I, I'm a fan of what he does on the baseball field when it comes to throwing a baseball at a higher rate of speed than some. So um, I like Cortez. I like his upside. He's got he, he's got what it takes to be a pitcher at the next level. I think he, he's really talented. Um, so let me pull up his numbers here. I'm not going to let me look at pitchers. Oh, here you go. Yeah, 5.2 innings, five hits, two runs, no earned, no walks, eight strikeouts. Yes, and he did have a hit by pitch. Um, the rest of the staff, only one earned run um, from West Moss. Uh, Cortez gets his first win of the season. Texas and moves to 4-0. 9-3, once again, nine runs for the good guys. 13 total hits, five total homers. Two from Jace Lavalette. Now, okay, I'm going to nitpick. I'm going to nitpick, and here's the deal. Now, there's two there's two schools of thought to this. There are two schools of thought. And, and with Jace Lavalette, I, I you don't now a lot of players in the in the MLB make their living like this, but if you cannot be this, it's great. He, he I don't want him to turn into the well, I'm gonna hit in, in every game, I'm gonna hit a homer, but then my other three at bats, I'm gonna strike out. You know, last night, five at bats, two homers. Two strikeouts, and it was kind of the same case over the weekend. We talked about, you know, he he's now up to five home runs on the season, um, but he's striking out a couple times a game too. So what I, I'm just I'm a big put the ball in play and see what happens guy, especially when you're talent like like uh, Jason Lavalette. And, and I'm not listen. This is not a concern yet. I'm not concerned. And listen, if you hit two home runs, I'll I will just be quiet and sit here. I, I you know you can strike out as many times as you want if you're going to hit two homers. 
But I don't want him to turn into that type of player because, you know, I'd rather him be a player that hits 30 homers but also is hitting for average. You know, you don't want to be the, well, I'm hitting 240, but I hit 30 bombs. I mean, that's fine. MLB teams like that. Some baseball fans like that, those types of numbers. That's just not my thing. I'm a big put it in play and see what happens. Guy. Now, I'm also a big power guy. Hit, keep hitting bombs. It's great. So it's not a concern. Don't take that, uh, you know, Aggie baseball fans, don't take this that way. I, this is not a concern for me in any any uh, capacity. Not a concern. But I just would like to see him, you know, strike, you know, let's cut down on the strikeouts. And, and part of it is, listen, sometimes, you know, obviously I was a PL in college, but I did hit growing up my entire life all throughout high school. And, and, and for me, when I was hitting, you have to – there's just some pitchers, some pitches that you see them and you go – I mean, your eyes light up. And, I, and the two pitches that Lavalette hit out yesterday, you know, I think his 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 eyes lit up. Some other pitches, they just – they get you sometimes. It's it's a bad pitch. It's a bad pitcher matchup for you. That stuff happens. Um, and, and it's still early in the year. So what I'm saying is these five homers that Lavalette hit, those five pitches could have just – lit his eyes up and he just drove them, you know, and then he's, but he's still aside from a few good pitches, he's still kind of settling in to the season and seeing the ball. You know, that's part of it. So that could be it. But once again, I'm not concerned about Lavalette. Obviously he had two home runs yesterday. I'm simply saying I don't want him to turn into a home run or strikeout guy. Cause that's just, you know what I mean? That's just not what you want to do, but I'm not concerned. Just wanted to add that out there. Uh, but once again, five total home runs, uh, Texas A&M hitters only struck out six times. Love to see that. Don't like strikeouts. Big put the ball in play guy. So six strikeouts, I can live with that. Um, so uh, this is a good win. This is a good midweek win. I think Cortez was great. I think the guys that came in after him were really good. 11 total strikeouts from the staff. Five total home runs. 13 total hits. This is a baseball game. There's nothing you can sit here and complain about. Um, and once again, I, do, I don't want anyone to think I'm, I'm complaining about Lavalette. I mean, the dude has hit five home runs in four baseball games. He's going to be just fine. I'm just saying something I'd like to see cut down as the year goes on, and that's just the strikeouts. Um, but, I mean, it's a game. Feel good about it. 4-0 on the year, 9-3 win over Incarnate Word. Now is when this gets interesting. You have four more get-right games. You play. You have a, a three-game set with Wagner. Um, at home, and then you have Lamar uh, coming to town as well, one more home game, before you go to Globe Life Field in Arlington to take on Arizona State on March 1st, USC on March 2nd, and then Arizona State again on March 3rd. And then after that, your game after that, which is a midweek, you play Texas, which is going to be a really fun baseball game. So you've got – You've got four more games to start seeing the ball, to uh, to uh, you know really get your pitchers dialed in, ready to rock and roll before you play some legit, you know, legit teams. So you want to see, um, you know, can keep doing the little things right. Don't um, stop kicking the ball around, stop striking out. Pitchers uh, keep getting dialed in, start seeing the plate well. Seeing your off-speed spin the right, the way you want it to, you know, get a feel for your pitches. This is these next four games are an opportunity to do that. And if you you know you you take care of business, you win these four games, you're um, eight and zero heading into those. If you can go three and one in in that four games with, or, um, I love four and zero, but three and one against USC, Arizona State twice in Texas, and you're that'd make you what um, eleven and one. You feel really good about where you're at. So. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, this is a really, really talented, a really good Texas A&M baseball team that, as I said, I think could win the SEC and I really do think could make the trip to Omaha. If if you're a Texas A&M baseball team, which I know a lot of us here are, you're allowed to go to work today, do whatever you're doing today, and be really excited about this team because they are incredibly talented. And, I I mean, one of the best teams in the SEC, I I, I just – Watch out for this team. This team can win a national championship legitimately. That is how good Texas A&M is. So lock in. It's going to be a fun season. 9-3 win over Incarnate Word. 4-0 on the year. 
series with Wagner coming up, Lamar coming up, and then the, the big dogs after that. So a lot of fun baseball to be played. We're going to talk a little bit about Texas A&M's loss to Arkansas. We'll do that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and a ton more. I love FanDuel. It's the app I'm using. Whenever I'm, I'm betting on sports, I'm using FanDuel. It's, a t- it's easy to use. They have everything you could ever want. They have the best odds. You have got to check out FanDuel. I promise you will not regret it. It is the best place to go wager on all your sports. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sports partner of the NBA and the Locked On Podcast Network. So, Texas A&M loses to the Arkansas Razorbacks. I mean, listen, you, you are now on the outside looking in. This is I mean, this is a home game. This is a home game, ladies and gentlemen. And you lose, you get swept by Arkansas, the worst defensive team in the SEC, one of the worst teams in the SEC as a whole, swept, lose this game 78-71. I mean, it is now going to be really, really difficult for Texas A&M to get into the NCAA tournament. I mean, now, let, let me rephrase that. You've got games at Tennessee, South Carolina. I mean, do I feel good about or, or South Carolina's games at home? You've got some games that could help you out, but do does anyone here feel good about Texas to make a tournament? I don't. I mean, you're six and seven in SEC play. I think you'd have to you would have to win three games to give yourself a chance. And these three games aren't easy. You got to go to Tennessee, host a ranked South Carolina team, go to Georgia, not a bad team by any stretch to imagine host a, a, a good Mississippi State team, and they go to Ole Miss. I mean, you could legitimately go 0-5 in those games. So, I mean, I, I don't I don't know what the solution is. I mean, this team just can't shoot. They shot 33% from the field in this game, 30% from three, and they were 25 of 39 from the free throw line, 64%. They missed 14 free throws. That's not – a winning recipe, ladies and gentlemen. Missing free throws. I mean, I, you know, I know it sounds like the cliche, but they they are free. You know, Division One basketball players standing at that line should be able to make free throws at a seventy-seven percent clip or better. And Texas A and M this year, what are we shooting on the year from free throw line? I mean, what? Like, it's got to be getting to the awful point. Sixty-nine point seven percent. I can't believe it's that high. I'm surprised it's not like 65 percent. I mean, it's just, um, I mean, you know, the. I also say when a team, and I know that Boots and, and Wade didn't lead the team in scoring. I know that. Um, um, I know that Jace Carter, Jace Carter led the team four seven, but in points with fourteen. But what I'm saying is. I just don't think an offense where Boots and 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 Wade Taylor dribble in circles and try and make something happen is the right thing to do. I, I just don't think that – I mean, I, I don't know what to do. And then, I mean, like this efficiency, Wade Taylor, 3 for 12. I talked about yesterday. you got to be more efficient. T- uh, Boots, Radford, 5 of 16. I mean, these are not efficient numbers in any way. Um, no. I mean, I, I just don't. Now, I mean, one one bright spot, I'll tell you this. Anderson Garcia, incredible basketball player. I, I feel bad for him. I mean, 15 rebounds, eight points, seven offensive rebounds. He was three or four from the line, one or one from three, two or three from the field. Um, I saw someone tweet, um, Anderson Garcia deserves a 
and she's able to turn him a bid. And yes, he does. He he's, I mean, what's he have to average him? He's nine point four rebounds on the year. I'm surprised it's not higher than that. But um, I mean, this team's in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, they're not playing good basketball. The offense is really struggling. They can't make free throws. They can't shoot. They have. I mean, this is a team that was projected to be one of the top teams in the SEC, and and, and you're looking at them maybe not making the NCAA tournament. So. I mean, you still have a chance to turn this around, but I think you would have to go nine and nine in SEC play to have a shot. To a shot, and even then, I think it's gonna. You know, you'd have to win one in the SEC tournament or something like that. So, um, it'll be interesting to see what this team does. I mean, you have an opportunity against Tennessee on Saturday, but still, that's on the road. It's not gonna be an easy game. It'll be interesting to see how this season plays out. But, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this um, this basketball team has a lot. There's a lot wrong here. Um, I haven't been stoked with the way Coach Williams – I well, listen, I'm still a huge buzz guy. He's he's built a great culture with this basketball program. And I'll also add that – well, I mean, listen, sometimes teams just don't go the way you want them to. This stuff happens. This team might just not have gone the way buzz – in, you know, envisioned it. That stuff's going to happen. Um, I'm not going to say get, get rid of Buzz after one bad year, but definitely, I mean, um, this year has not gone the way many expected it to go, and, and it's definitely frustrating. So if this team wants to find a way to sneak into the NCAA tournament, they need to start winning games and winning games now and have a good showing in the SEC tournament. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. I really do appreciate it. Hope everybody has a great rest of your day today, and we will see you tomorrow.